I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth, this is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Yo, what's happening? My man. Okay, I'm trying it out. It didn't work. New year, new show. Familiar voices, uh, maybe, to you. Welcome to the Bottom Line. I'm Choice Woodman. Chris Sneed to my right. Clint Scott across the way taking care of us. How we doing over here? Happy New Year. You get to talk first if you want. You're deferring? You're, you're supposed to say uh, A.O. Sneeder to him. Otherwise, oh, he won't respond. Man, I forgot. Uh, A.O. Sneeder. What's up? <laughs> I don't get a what it's what it no. do. What it do, y'all? Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm learning the uh, ropes of this new territory. I mean, actually, I mean, I am an alum of this show before. I mean, I've I've been in this territory, but it's been a long while. So it's okay. I'm y'all are gonna back. have to glad you're back. You're okay. You're gonna have to ease me back in like All a right. like a warm man. No, like a old man getting into a warm bath. Mm. Boy, this has started off really well. I you gotta know, say. Uh, my whole uh, New Year's resolutions of no screw ups for uh, 2023. Four is already gone, so I don't have to worry about that one. Yep, was that, was that your uh, initiatives? I have one initiative for 2024. You got one? Yeah, one initiative. Okay, I'm listening. I told you earlier, I am no longer going to try to explain officiating calls to you guys anymore. Yo, what do you mean, you people? What you are you people. trying to say, you All people? you people. You people. I, so, uh, saying, uh, I, have, I have just decided that people want to be mad at officials, and I'm just going to let them. I'm not going to try to explain... This is the Michael Scott, thank you, me, yeah. or Jeff right there. Yeah, I'm not we do gonna... want to just be mad at officials. I know. And, I, you know, Jamie told me that one point. He, he, I, I remember trying to tell him one time, uh, you know, he goes, Sneed, I don't want your stinking explanation. I just want to be mad. Okay. I, <laughs> you can be mad. But right. I actually don't want to be mad at officials uh, when it comes to Dallas and Detroit. I, the officials were all right. So, I mean, they were correct. So I'm not, I'm not upset with them. I'm happy with their their correct enforcement of <clears throat> Dan Campbell trying to confuse them. So I'm good with that. So how was the uh, the New Year's? All the Christmases and whatnot. uh Two Christmases happened. Uh-huh. Uh huh. One Christmas to go. So got one. Okay. Yeah, got to go. Uh, the in law Christmas um, because Ooh. we went to uh, we had the uh, immediate family Christmas. Okay. Um, and then we had the extended family Christmas. Oh. And now we have the in-law Christmas. <laughs> Immediate family extended and now the... Uh... Yeah, I had went down to my daughter's house in Aspermont and had Christmas down there with them and the granddaughters and the girls. And and then went out to North Carolina and did that with the uh, sisters and mom. And So what? Okay. where's the in-law Christmas being held? Am I yellow? Up in yellow, huh? Yeah. Got to go to uh, yellow town. What is uh, the color that you got going on? I, my eyes are... Periwinkle. Having... Periwinkle. Mm-hmm. Are we sure on that? Yes, 1,000%. Okay. This is periwinkle. I was going to go more of a fuchsia myself. No, it's periwinkle. But, uh, Looks like that Kansas State basketball uniform. Yeah, that's it's like not quite full. It's like practice tank. And it's not, it doesn't look like that. Just That's the color not, of it. It's care. not full lavender. It's just, uh, it's just Fabletics. I got a Fabletics shirt. Yeah. Periwinkle. I like it. I just I didn't know. It. It's between that. like a gray and a light purple. It is. And it's uh it's it's Julio. Julio. I'm trying to see what it comes off as on the, the It telly looks kind of whitish, but it's it's a periwinkle. Periwinkle. So, yeah. uh lots to get into on the sports front. Tech basketball finally done with the non-con slate. Thank They'll God. start up uh conference play against the Longhorns in Austin this week. Thank we'll, the maker. We will uh chat about that. Of course, college football playoff was pretty good. Uh Enjoyed it. Last night, enjoyed it. Yesterday, if you're into you know good games, then that that was probably your thing. Uh, had two two close games. I Collier had to point this out to me um, earlier this morning. Last year's games were actually closer by number, but they didn't feel like it, right? I can't even remember who was in last year's games. Uh, TCU and Michigan. Oh, that's right. That was a six point game, yeah. I think. And then 
uh, Georgia won on a uh, on a last play. Who did Georgia play? I can't. That was uh, the Georgia Ohio State game. Yeah, the field oh, yeah. goal. Yeah, the field goal. Uh, so, yeah. so they get a field goal to, to finish it off. So you know the, in the totality, funny thing about those that? games were closer, but these felt closer. I think I think TCU would have had a better time with Ohio State than they did with Georgia. Yeah, in a strange way. Oh, I don't think that's I don't think that's crazy. I mean, we talk about it in sports all the time. Matchups are are vital. You know what's I I I was watching the games yesterday, and I and I said this to myself when I went. It's kind of cool. You got a Big Twelve team, you got Pac Twelve team, and you really thought about it. You said no. We've got a Big Ten team versus an SEC team. <laughs> we got we got it, two Big Ten teams and two SEC teams. And that's, teams is and what that's we've got. it. Just made me sports sad. What when we get I next realized, year? Huh? We get this year. I say next year. This year. You know, you really had. I mean, I mean, I'm so. What if Texas had won last night? Uh huh. Would they have broke into an SEC champ? I don't know. If you really want to extend the middle finger back to the Big Twelve, like you did really at, at, at the Big Twelve championship game, would you have just broke out an SEC chant? They could have, but I bet there was a, there would have at least been a small portion of Texas fans that SEC was leaving their mouths. I I would put money down on that because uh, maybe not maybe I not had, all of them. If I was a Texas fan and I was leaving the conference and I had just won the Sugar Bowl. I would a hundred percent be saying SEC. I was I was just thrilled, honestly, just thrilled that I um, Texas football is is leaving my mind for the most part. Like I don't, the Aggies are still around. You know, they don't live rent free or anything. They're still around in my head. Texas, it'll be there occasionally. I'll still root against them, but actively rooting week to week like it is when they're a conference foe. It's not. It's not the same. So I'm I'm glad we're past this. I was so glad that they to see them fall. So we're done with them. It's they're gone. In in football. In football, yes. From a football standpoint. Because we're not done with them in basketball. That happens this week. Last trip to Austin mm. in men's basketball. Last trip for them to Lubbock in women's basketball this week. Mm. So you get you get a double dip of Longhorn hate. Man, you can really hate on the Longhorns all week long if you'd like to. But um, enjoyed the finish to that one. And honestly, the two teams I was rooting for got through. I kind of like that the... It's one versus two. That's what I'm always in favor of. The, the, I mean, it, they, they were both underdogs in there. Which is kind of funny. Games. It's crazy. Because... The two 13-0 teams. Yeah. Well, you got two 14-0 teams playing. Yeah. Uh, and I can't wait. I mean, we do have... We're finally in the year that brings us a college football playoff with 12 teams. We've finally arrived to that. So I am excited because you can't tell me there wasn't good, more good football, meaningful football to be had this year. Well, Oregon you, couldn't have made a, a splash. Georgia uh, definitely yeah. would have made a splash. I mean, I, I'm not saying they would have I, won I mean, necessarily. Yeah, I, I think this would have been a good 12-team playoff year. Sure. It was. I mean, but I, I mean, I want to ask this question when we get back. I guess after we do take versus take, but uh, are you on the Kirk Herb Street wagon? Just get rid of their bowl games. No, but That's I will. Good. I will answer more in depth wow. <laughs> on the other side. Good. No, I mean, Kirk Herb, Kirk Herb Street. I still respect a lot. But he has become quite the elitist. That's where I was going. College football elitist. That's exactly what he's become. And uh, we can talk about that. We'll get to take versus take coming up next. You're hanging with the bottom line right here on 100.7, the score. Getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7, the score. That music means it's time for take versus take. It's a Tuesday, so Sneed gets to, uh, to dive in today. He's Chris Snead. I'm Choice Woodman. Clint Scott across the way. Me versus Clint. Apparently, I have the questions today. So, yeah, you have the questions because I dang sure don't. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to uh, to start off with a fairly simple one. If you had an opportunity to implement one sport at Texas Tech, 
but you had to eliminate a sport to uh, get this new sport, what would you choose? Ted. Wait, what? So if that's if, see, that's hard if you, for if you got to bring in a new department, a new not department, but a new sport to the athletic department. But you had to eliminate a sport to do it, and you can't say you, you wouldn't eliminate anything. Well, you yeah, okay. So you're gonna offend some All right, coach out there. I'm gonna have to offend some coach. You're gonna offend and I'm coach. sorry. I am sorry, but um, <sighs> <laughs> that's the greatest part of this question. You gotta offend someone. I'm gonna have to offend somebody here. But I'm gonna try to who I can offend the least here. I'm gonna offend <laughs> men's cross country. Okay, <laughs> because we have. Indoor and outdoor men's track. We have indoor and outdoor w- women's track. We also have women's cross country. Yep. I'm just going to make one coach mad for one sport. I'm actually going to give him part of the fall off because he doesn't have to do that. But we would bring in um, – I think we're going to bring in men's soccer. Okay. Um, but uh, the problem is – I don't know if we're going to be able to stay. I didn't ask you to worry about conferences or anything. Well, it's not that. I'm not worried about conferences. Can I bring in more than one sport? <laughs> okay, get rid of another. No, we don't have to bring oh. rid of another because I got rid of men's men's cross country and brought in men's soccer, but I'm going to add women's Ooh. gymnastics. Okay. I'm also going to add women's swimming and diving. Okay. Clint. Uh, I, at first, I was going to bring in collegiate curling, but I'll stick to the ice and not go curling. I think if Texas Tech had a collegiate hockey team, oh man, would be a blast, and it would be the mo- immediately would be the most hockey that I would take in because I would go all the time. Um, what am I taking away? That's the tough part. That's a good, uh, that's a good little second part of that question choice. Can I just take out? outdoor track and leave indoor track so oh. we still have one of Man. the tracks i mean you just and took I, away our, okay, our so, national championship well, so I'm, I'm go i went indoor because we have this awesome indoor facility but you don't have a national and that way you there. still have your roster and you still have those athletes competing you take away like cross country or you take away like women's golf or men's tennis none they're never competing right okay so that was my math so Clint had the point all the way up until he eliminated the outdoor the track. <laughs> if I had went indoor enough. track, would that have made it better? Probably, yes. Indoor track. That's what I meant to say. No. So Sneed gets the point. I would have, yeah, I mean, the hockey thing, That'd I would awesome. love it. Plus, it would mean we'd get an ice rink in Lubbock. Too. Yeah. We would have so, to, uh, I mean, we, we do have club hockey, but they play in oh, Amarillo. Amarillo now. They used to play down there. Yeah. But yeah, I think that they're in Amarillo now. Yeah. So I would love, I mean, I think it would be fun here. Yeah, yeah. And apparently, they're pretty good too. Yeah, they are good. Yeah, they're really good. So hockey would have been the answer that I was searching for the most, mm. but because of your elimination of track, you can't do that. Well, I didn't. Eliminate, see, I got, see, that's I got the thing. I didn't eliminate yeah. all of. I didn't eliminate all of track. You I eliminated did get rid of the one of we have so a national the one championship. We've got a t- a natty in, and that's... so you're so you're not believing in the indoor. Wow. Okay, all right, I see wow. how it is. Yeah, reverse it. All right, I thought this was America. Clint starts first. If you were in a coma. And only one song would wake you up. What would that one song be? Oh, uh, <laughs> Wham's "Wake Me Up." <laughs> <Before you go. laughs> Just for the First, fun of it. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Is that Wham? That's yeah, Wham. Yeah, it's Wham. Okay. Wake me okay, up move. before you go. Go. Okay. What's yours? I mean, if you don't know the answer to this already. To live like you were dying. <laughs> I went oh. skydiving. <laughs> okay, I uh, <clears throat> neither answer was great. What? But we'll go with what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I get to be the judge here. Wake right? me up before you go, go. Yeah, I know, but it's Come also on. it's also wham. wham. Yeah, I mean the, it's for the pun. Mine had purpose the pun, and meaning. Need. Purpose and meaning. Mm. Okay, I should uh, be going for a sweep here. We're gonna go, Clint, on that. I should one be going for a l- sweep here. At least he went. But I mean, you're going with the script. <laughs> the script. 
I thought that's how all the judges that's were around the, here. That's the NFL sneeze. Yeah, I thought that's how all the NFL. judges were. I Come thought that's how, how the officials were around just, here. Going to follow the script. Just back judges, not not the judges of uh, uh, take versus take. All right. Uh, last one, Sneed, you could start us off. Mm-hmm. Would you rather have a chauffeured limo for the rest of your life, but you'd never get to drive again? Or drive the car of your dreams for the re- rest of your life, but never get to drive any other car. That you get that one, no matter how old it gets. I am, I am getting a chauffeur. I don't have to drive anymore. You would never. No, you'd be okay with I'd not having okay the control of driving. With, I, no, I'm, I'm going to be in control of when I go, where I go, and how I go. I need someone to drive me there. I am definitely taking a chauffeur all the rest of my life. I uh, do not. Trust. I guess I, I would probably get a to pick the driver in this scenario, mm-hmm. but still, I, I will be honest. There are times where I'm not a very patient driver, and I don't know if I could handle sitting on the back of like a long road trip. And I'm like, can we speed this process up a little bit? So me and the Dark Knights Batmobile are gonna have a, a heck of a time. <laughs> that's now street legal, <laughs> going everywhere all the time. It's gonna be a blast. We're going to go off-roading because you can't like if you want to go like off-roading or something like that we're going to hey chauffeur do a donut parking lot go uh, go into this field over here why can't we i mean why can't we we've had some we've had some late finishes in this this version of take oh, versus take God. and that is, that is again that is, that is he was gonna have it until you said the batmobile <laughs> and then, <laughs> then it's like well man I don't that need- thing that tank is not gonna like break down anytime soon. So uh yeah. It's bulletproof. What you- that's oh, brutal. <laughs> Clint wins two to one. That's as brutal. much as I hate to give him the win. That's that is so brutal. <laughs> I mean I clearly reported. You clearly reported. I clearly reported. Are you sure? I I clearly reported. Wait, you're number seventy, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, uh, so it says Rig Choice has money on this, and Sneed, don't let him get to you. That's no, okay. They're not getting to me. Uh, Bring Me to Life by Evanescence for the uh, Wake Me Up song. It's pretty good. 2.2 2 seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu. It's good. On a bull named Fu Manchu. I, that was my one goal when I wrote a bull, is to get to the 2.2 2 seconds. You didn't even make it point eight seconds. Oh, I got it. I got over a second. Point three seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu. I got what was the bull's name? I always wasn't it this. peaches. <laughs> don't, don't tell anyone that. No. If that bull's name was peaches, don't tell anyone that. No, it was. Uh, that, 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 I think that was actually his that, real name, but that wasn't his. his the bull. Name, that wasn't that like his code like, name. What is his name. real name? What does that, that mean? The Widowmaker. <laughs> like peaches, but everyone calls me like Joe. No, what so do you like? Talking? Everyone have, calls me the Widowmaker. <laughs> it's like the Master Rider. Uh, it's like the horse has a stage name. And a, a name that, that the owner has given it. And mm-hmm. that wasn't the bull's name for... Like pin name or whatever? Yeah, whatever. Um, Peaches is my real name, but it's not what's on the side of my books. Mm-hmm. Let's see. This from the chat line. Choice, what are you being punished for? They paired you with an official and your least favorite Kansan? No one said he's my least favorite Kansan. <laughs> we got a few to choose from around here. So oh, Wow. You weren't. You didn't seem to be too upset about being paired with that official. No, we we get along. We do. We're buds. We we went through this on uh, on Independence Day, and by Independence Day, I mean December sixteenth, Independence Bowl Day. Yeah. We already went over this. We're buds. Um, <laughs> 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 what is? This is this oh is it. Gosh, you dude. Bring the guys out of my head. All right. Retroactively, because he's playing the song, he loses. <laughs> Can't do it. Sneed's too late. Sneed Can't do it. Win, I've folks. already put the belt on the wall. Retroactively, <laughs> you have been stripped of your title because of cheating, like every Kansan out there. Well, wait a second. So, you, wait a second. You did. You just. He's had, had to vacate the he win. He vacated it, so actually means no one won. Oh he, man, that sucks. I'm still giving it to Sneed. Still giving it to Sneed. I'm new to this show, so we're making up the rules as we go. It's okay. All right. Plenty more from you on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. We'll fill you in on why, you know, I'm here in the first place. For anybody just joining us, it is the bottom line 
on 100.7 The Score. Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth, this is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Brings me back to the uh, high school days. <laughs> this was out for me. Or where is somewhere in there? Maybe junior high. Wow, God, thanks for dating me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't actually date my wife, but it's cool. That's one thing we got to figure out. Dad joke? Is that coming over? Are we just vacating that? You know, one of the things that I received for Christmas in my stocking. Did you get a dad joke book? I got a 101 dad jokes. And I was kind of perusing them all, send and they're me. pretty good. Why didn't you send me any? Um, In case the dad joke comes over here, then you can you can give your own. Absolutely. I don't know. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna sit there and pretend to be disgusted by it like hacks. Oh. Okay. Yeah. He actually. What? Loves them. He actually loves them, but I know he does. He's over there he pretending. Has to fake it. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> So uh, we'll see. Y'all, y'all can tell us on the chat line whether you want to uh, see the dad joke survive or uh, you know or it not. was. Uh, we used to do that years ago on the morning drive. I remember this. And Chuck killed. It was the bad joke was, of the day, right? It was Snader's bad joke. Of bad the day. joke of the day. I do and, remember that. And you know what? We would do it at seven forty every morning. I remember. And it would be, we would get texts. From parents, you got to say the dad joke or the bad joke. My kid won't get out of the car yeah. until they say the bad joke. And That's what I. Chuck yeah. killed it. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. And you know you killed it. So don't come down here telling me you didn't. And uh, and I appreciate you you sticking up for the officials this morning, Chuck. Uh, a few from the chat line to catch up on. Uh, did Clint get demoted? If so, I'm boycotting to be so sad. No, no promoted. He he's going, promoted. He's, he's got, gone to Tech Talk. He's gone to the uh, the hate team, man. I'm he's the one who like, got uh, he got promoted. He, yeah, he's got uh, <laughs> he got brought up to the to the show. That's right. And and the rest was down here languishing in a ball. Uh, Tennessee Raider says War Man horse name. Nice. That's War Man and uh. More math. I, uh, what are we doing about the race? That's got to stay with the end of the bench, right? The what? The horse race coming up in April. Oh, the that's that's 100% staying on this show. Oh, it's coming, coming over. It wasn't on this show. It wasn't on this show? No. We, oh, we had weed strains. <laughs> no, it was, it was my, well, the horse, race is, the horse race is 100% coming. It was here. my idea. And then Clint, uh, is the one who, well, we were together, but I'm the one who, who launched it. <laughs> okay. He doesn't like anger this. behind the glass. <laughs> Chuck is texting, by the way. <laughs> if Chuck says he didn't kill it, I'm going to tell him you did kill what it. Did, what did Chuck say? Best decision ever. No one called to complain. <laughs> uh, you would have. No one ever called you to complain, Chuck. Mm. I'm telling you, the number of people that come up to me in public mm-hmm. and say, "Oh, I, the dad joke is great." I yeah. mean, it's I get just as much flack, but yep. on on the chat line, but in public. Yeah. The number of people who would tell me, my kids love that. They won't get out of the car until you say the bad joke of the day. Yeah. So, and I had to deal it with may, that. it may come back. We'll see. I don't know. The way Choice just said, you know, people on the street just come up to me all the time and talk about how great I it is. never said the streets. It was kind of like, yeah, I have this out of town girlfriend. Yeah. You don't bro. know her. You know, she's like uh, way on, out, of, out of state, actually. The funny thing is, in high school, my first girlfriend, my first. Like longer term girlfriend was from out of town, so it was. She lived in Amarillo, and I it was in Dumas. And the name so is always like sure, sure, yeah, totally. Uh, UT fans are still going to be ignorant, obnoxious fans saying that they are in prestigious conference and earning more, and they won't be pulling the conference along like they did in the Big Twelve. Of course they are, and uh, they're going to go. They did. They're going to go seven and five next year. <laughs> Probably not. I'm I'm dreaming, but no, uh, you're not dreaming. Well, sweat's not going to be there. That's going to help. Um, seven and five is probably a little short. Eight and four, I would not be shocked at at all. Okay, let's look, pull up their schedule for next year. Fuchsia would clash with Sneed's red hair. Okay, 
yin and yang with these shows. Got a sooner and a poke on one, a ref and a ref hater on the other. <laughs> That's not true. I love all officials. I okay. just want them to be good. Uh, Sneed, I'm sure you've already answered this, but thoughts on the Lions Cowboys call? I think it could have gone either way. He already did answer, actually, saying he's not going to answer. But I'll give you my thoughts. Refs were fantastic in that game. Except the tripping call they missed uh, a little bit earlier in that drive that hurt the Cowboys. You bre- Did you see that replay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, where's AD going to? Um, Yahoo. Yeah. Yahoo. Yeah, he's uh, got an expanded role with yeah, rivals. So. so we wish AD the best. Love the dude. <clears throat> uh, don't get the people who whine about too many bowls. Oh, yeah. Need to bring this I, back up. Yeah. Just uh, don't watch football if you don't want more football. So yeah. you said uh, Kirk Herbstreet. Kirk Herbstreet. On to the, eliminate the bowls. He said yesterday on a college game day, he says, we're, we're creating a bunch of, of uh, um, I can't remember what he said it. Yeah. Uh, competitive exhibition games. Okay. And ex- yeah. Newsflash, Kurt, for the last 40 years, all but uh, about three bowl games every year were competitive exhibition games. Even back into the all but one. Well, remember, right? I remember mean, back in the in the in the nineties and eighties and the seventies. I know we got to you get you get to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, yeah, the Rose Bowl game would be played, and then the Orange Bowl game would be played, and then the Sugar Bowl we played, and from that they would have this and this and this and. But for the most part. All the other bowl games were just competitive exhibition games. Sure, there. Because the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl didn't have any outcome on what happened in the Sugar Bowl. Yep. And none of those things mattered. They're all competitive exhibition games. And the reason why we do them is that so half the teams can feel good about themselves themselves when the season's over. You know, I know that you, Kirk Herbstreet, have become a college football elitist, and you only care about the teams in the top five. Because you know you don't care about teams in the top eight. You you are a guy who has, has publicly said you don't want to go to 12. You think four is the right number. And I don't know why you're such an elitist. I get it because you only care about Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, and, and maybe Michigan, maybe Texas. You probably would rather it be Texas than Michigan. And that's all you really care about. I mean, the, the ESPN Saturday night game, the one that you're going to cover, that's all you care about. You don't care about anything else. And, you know, I mean, uh, Oregon, Baylor, uh, Tennessee, guys like that, I, you could care less. So, yeah. I mean. No, and, and I think that's where I, I feel like Kirk Herbstreit used to be great for college football. And I'm not, not saying he's, he's, he's not anymore. No, I, I'm not saying he's he's gone from that because I still think he's he does a good job calling games. I do think that. But his role on college game day – yeah, I look if if Kirk wants to get rid of the bowl games and you know mesh it into a sixty four team playoff. Okay, go ahead. That's not what he wants, though. But I he know that's not what he wants. He wants he to get wants... rid of the bowl games and have a have the same four team playoff. I I know he does, and it's it's not good for the sport. You know what? I've I have always always been on the side of air on or aired on the side of. Look, I want more teams in that don't deserve to be there or that won't. That that'll give us blowout games or whatever, um, but if they deserve to be there, let them get in. We can live through our blowouts because we see blowouts all the time anyway. Um, rather than leave teams out that are deserving, mm-hmm. and we haven't seen it a ton in the four team playoff. We haven't seen it a ton, but who's to say we won't get upsets? I mean, what? What's one thing that's been phenomenal about the college basketball tournament every time? Is yeah, you may not get the absolute best winner every year. We may not get that this year. Cause is Georgia how many you think there's any AP voters out there that's gonna vote for Georgia? <laughs> I think so. I, I think there will I, be I, after I they beat they, Florida State sixty three yeah. to three. Sixty three to three. 63 they to made three? they made their statement. I so think I think, I think, think it's there's gonna be an AP voter that puts Georgia number one after all this. Kirk Herb Street career stats. Uh, 183 of 317 for 57 7 percent, 2263 yards, 7.1 yards per attempt, uh, five touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Career, thanks, Kirk. So you're the guy that I need to be listening to. Yeah, I mean, I 
Did you even play in a ball game, Kurt? <laughs> he has been. He has become an elitist. But I don't really care because the money's going to talk. We get our 12 team playoff this year. I'm very happy. You went 8 about and 3. That. Kirk, you played in the uh, Citrus Bowl. Mm. Now the Cheese at Citrus Bowl. It's the bottom line. You get Kaylee's Dailies coming up next on 100.7 The Score. Bringing you the truth or something like the truth. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Thanks for hanging with us on a Tuesday. It's the Bottom Line. 7 score and 107 the score.com. Choice Woodman, Jamie Lint, Cleet Scott, hanging out with you till three today. Uh, keep the thoughts and comments rolling in. It's Flooring Center chat line, yours through that 100.7 the score mobile app. You want a bit of breaking news? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Pop Isaacs has been named Big 12 Player of the Week. What? what? It's been a while. So, man. Right? I mean, did. Did you have one all of last year? I'm trying to think if you ever had a Big 12 player of the week. Last year is such a just complete cluster that I I know there were some good moments that happened here and there, but the bad ones overshadowed them and just the team overall overshadowed it so much. Yeah, you had a stretch. It's hard to remember any. You had a stretch over like a two week stretch where it felt like you got three wins against ranked opponents. Yeah. If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, you're right. It was like early February or late January, somewhere in there, something like that? Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing I'm part of that, but it felt... No, it was it was in there because you started off 0-8 in cl- league play, and then yeah. you had that three-game winning streak. Okay. So there were some positive moments, but, um, you know, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, Choice, I just... And maybe it's because of the disappointment, frustration, everything that went down last year. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm more excited about the simple things for this year's team. For example, I feel like the team is really sharing the basketball well. I feel like the team is looks like they're totally playing together. Um, and I think Coach McCaslin deserves plenty of credit for oh, that. Oh, sure. Um, I just, you know, and, and I go back to when Coach McCaslin got here and he's interviewing all the old players. Is this guy going to stick around? Is he not going to stick around? Mm-hmm. And um, there were some that were weeded out that I'm like, really? That guy can play? Jalen Tyson, for example. Yeah. I mean, that guy can play. He's young. We can't build him into what we want him to be. And now I just look at the team chemistry. Oh, yeah. And I think, hmm, all good. Feels like good decisions. I, I completely agree. Yeah, yeah it feels like at, good decisions made. Yeah. and Yeah. The guy that Jalen Tyson followed also, too. Oh, Over goodness Cal, gracious. That's, yeah. uh, and yeah. they're not doing so hot. So yeah, he's that's not hurting my yeah, feelings. He was not a question. You know, um, we couldn't get rid of him. Hax and I talked about that, I don't know if it's last week or the week before, but it, it seems just much more of a joy to watch. They're so much more likable, in my exactly. opinion. Exactly. I mean, it's just the likability factor. And, and, and they may make the tournament, they may not. And I'll be honest with you, part of it is because. I don't know how much money they're making. <laughs> Just, uh, it was hard for me to root for a guy who was making four hundred and fifty grand that couldn't play the majority of the season. Yeah, yeah. Okay? No, I get that, but but the likability factor is just and part of it is the chemistry and yeah, this they, team feels a lot different than what you had last year. And it felt like the whole year, or at least uh, for a lot of the year last year, I'm sitting there having to try to convince myself to. To root for, not to root for the double T, but to root for individual guys. So it's like, yes, all right. Fardos, the, the the chunky monkey gets back out there, and and isn't that a flavor of ice cream? Is it? I don't know. I think it's chunky monkey. Isn't that a Ben and Jerry's? Anyway, Fardos. I was trying to think of the. He fattest looked at food you, Clint. I don't know if you were like. Did he have the nickname of Chunky Monkey? Would he be a fan of Chunky Monkey? I didn't appreciate how quickly you looked this direction either way. I honest. figured you'd be our ice cream expert, Clint. And I think you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I do love some ice cream. Anyway, Bardo's the, uh, we'll call him what, a, what I'd call my, like a, a fat baby, a chonkers, a little chonkers, chonkers. you know. Chonkers. So Fardos, and that's okay for you to say that because that's what you said you were to the baby. to yeah, yeah to your little, little guy. Fardos was a baby anyway, yeah, okay. so yeah. like the whole year. Anyway, he comes off the bench eating cheese its all the time, and 
I'm sitting there trying to convince myself. All right. Yeah, the fact that he only gets one inch off the floor is is totally fine because he's really tall and sometimes made a shot every once in a while. I mean, I just I'm trying to convince myself to like these guys last year, and I don't have to do that with this team. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's the difference for me. <clears throat> and it makes me appreciate the guys that are back from last year because I think Coach McCaslin and going through and deciding who he was going to keep and who he wasn't going to keep – was looking for characteristics of guys that he thought, hey, th- these guys are going to be able to uh, play within my system and play the style that I want them to play, but also be the teammates that I want them to be. Yeah. And so, you know, Pop Isaacs, our, our Big 12 player of the week, and even Robert Jennings, you know, guys like that, that they're coming back. Sure. Are there any others? Who am I missing? Oh, yeah, there are more. Kerwin. Kerwin. Uh, um, he's actually, you know, De- elevated a ton since DeMorean last year. DeMorean Williams. Yeah, I think that's yeah. it. I think he's, he had four. He's still on the team, right? <laughs> he is. Yeah. He played I, at the end of the game on— I know. Uh, I was being somewhat sarcastic. Yeah, I, I'm i shocked at, at the difference in the two, in Kerwin and DeMorean Williams, that How they, they're basically were the same where they— yep. I mean, DeMorean probably played more than Kerwin last year. Oh, I don't think there was any question. Um, I think way more. But how Kerwin has just, you know, spiked um, in, in terms of production. And and his seems to be between the ears and attitude and all that seems to be, from those that seem to know more than me, uh, way different mm-hmm. than it was last year. Um, and, and surroundings have a lot to do with that. But um, I don't know what to expect when league play rolls around. Because this is an extremely difficult league like it is every single season. Um, I, I don't think I'd be surprised if this team won. I'd probably put the floor about six games um, mm. in league play. That would be the bottom if, if things just really didn't click and they you couldn't win games away from home, that sort of thing. That would be disappointing. It would six. be. It, it would be disappointing. But I wouldn't be surprised at that result necessarily. But, if you got uh, but a- I also wouldn't be surprised if you went and won 10 or 11 games. I, I, think, I think I would be surprised with both of them. Which is which would be more six surprising? Six or ten or eleven? Oh man! Because I think most people project this team to be somewhere between eight and nine wins, maybe ten wins. Eight to ten wins would probably man, be more. Kind of where I see it, eight, eight or nine. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I guess eleven wins or six losses or six wins. Sorry. I think six would be a bigger surprise. I don't know. Eleven seems like a really lot too. It does. A really lot. Which would be more surprising? A really large to your number. A really, a really lot. But what what about you? What's more surprising? Six wins or eleven wins for the Red Raiders? <laughs> you there? <laughs> I think we just woke him up. I was just uh you know doing things with the beautiful sounds of your voices that I have. Oh, thank you. Here. Sorry. Um I would think six wins or eleven I'd for be conference. More play. Surprised. I mean, I think I'd be more surprised at eleven wins. I'll be honest. I think I'm flipping and leaning that direction. 11 would be a lot. Yeah. I mean, because what 11's probably getting you into top five territory in this league. No, I don't. I don't probably. think either would floor me. Yeah. Um. I just I, I I would be talked into you know if future you came back and said one of these two things happened, I think I'd be more easily talked into. Hey, you took care of business uh, in your home games against like a UCF and Oklahoma State, and then you took care against. West Virginia, but maybe you slipped once in a game you shouldn't have on the return trip to UCF or something like that. Oh, something in there. Someone says on the chat line, 11 is set, 7 isn't that crazy. Um, but when you think about it game by game, that means you would have to win, what, eight games at least at home. I think you can give yourself room to lose one home game there and four games on the road. You'd, you'd go 8-1 and one at home, and then you'd have to win at least four of those on the road. Are there four games you can win on the road? That's my question. You play at West Virginia and at Oklahoma State. Both tough venues to play in, but not great teams this year. You play at UCF, another one of those that's towards the bottom of the league. So Mm -hmm. where's the other road game? Not winning at Iowa State, most likely. Not not for sure. Tough place to win. Not probably not winning at Baylor. Probably. You could probably win though. You could probably win at TCU. Don't know, but that's that's doable. At OU, doable. So I guess, I, and you know what? To be completely honest, I don't view this Texas team 
nearly in the same light that I look at the at Houston, Kansas, or Baylor right now. Mm-hmm. And you play Texas on the road, first game of league play. I would not be just appalled if Texas Tech went in and won on Saturday. I'd be thrilled. I I, I, I would be thrilled, <laughs> but it wouldn't be shocking to me. I'd be uh, you know yeah. raise the eyebrow at it. Like, oh, but not it wouldn't be anything that would I, just. I would tell you I'm not going to predict it, but I wouldn't be shocked. Same here. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to predict it. I'm not saying that. But this this Texas team, you look at the metrics on them. You look, they're almost the same team as Texas Tech. They've lost their lost their games to better teams. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're basically the same team as Texas Tech. They're a few spots off in Ken Palm, like two spots off in the the net rankings. These two teams are almost mirror images of each other. The only reason Texas is ranked twentieth right now is because of their preseason hype. That's it. Mm-hmm. So it is a winnable game on Saturday. That being said, going to be a tough one. All right, uh, someone already calling me out for my bad math. Surprise, surprise. And your fat shaming. Did I fat shame? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe so. You're listening to the bottom line on 100.7 score. Getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Thanks for hanging with us on a Tuesday. You got the bottom line on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Choice Woodman, Jamie Lent. Here in the first United Bank studio, Clint Scott across the way taking care of us. You'll hear him coming up on Tech Talk. Uh, someone did ask who is on Tech Talk. Uh, should be it will be Clint and Gus for the. Uh, I hated this phrase, but I'm gonna say it anyway. And during COVID, the new normal. <laughs> the new normal. I know that was like something I got so tired of during COVID. Uh, People said that. And Clint's involved. So there's no should, normal. Too. Yeah. That's, should there be normal? The new Tech Talk. We'll just go with that. Sounds good. You weren't. You weren't gonna get a pushback. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Clint and Gus will be your normal duo on Tech Talk there. Um, dynamic duo. Dynamic. Why do you give that to him? Because it's going to be dynamite. It's going to be fun. But it's him. It's going to be good times. <clears throat> you know I'm right here, right? I mean, yeah. ice oh, cream talk. You can hear this? Chunky monkey. Yeah. That's yeah. going out, you know, to everyone. I mean, it's, People can hear that? it's truly the bottom line post game show. It's really what it is. Okay, that's what we're gonna do every day. The for three hours is breakdown. Break down what happened on this show. All right. <clears throat> well, something that normally happens at this time is questions. Time now for Jamie's question of the day. Okay, I know you can't pick the four new teams coming into the Big Twelve Conference. I, I could tell you who they're. I know. Oh, okay. okay. But I want you to pick someone in the conference that's right now because I want you to, to tell me who you think will make the biggest jump in the conference standings next year compared to where they were this year. So obviously you can't pick Arizona, Arizona State, or Colorado, or Utah because they're not here. So so of the 10 remaining teams, yep. we have 10. Which one do you expect to be? Much better next year than they were this year. Let me try that again. The 12 remaining teams, um, who will be better? That's right. There's 12. I know. I The number. Yeah, but you can't say Texas time. or Oklahoma. No, there's 14 right now with <laughs> Texas and Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, we were so close to having yep. a Big 12 for a You're moment, right. but we, right. we're not going to get a Big 12. It's going to be a Big 16. You're right. Uh, no, we're good. Um, so who is going to make the biggest jump from this year to next year? Yep. And you want record wise or just, you know? Sure. I mean, that's the, probably the easiest. Because I guess last year the answer would have been. Uh, I'm looking for finishing the Big 12 Conference. Okay. Because last year I think that would have been West Virginia going from yeah. way down to a top five finisher in the league this year. Oh, man. Um, the biggest faller last year was uh, TCU, I guess, going mm-hmm. from first to losing team. This is a tough one Um, because I think there's a lot of candidates here. So you really kind of have to look. I'm extremely biased. You have to look down towards the bottom 
right. if you're so, looking for a big jump, right? Right. So that's what I'm pulling up is the, the standings from this year. I got to be honest. I'm, I'm ready to be incredibly burnt on my answer. Don't because do I'm Don't do I'm it. I'm putting stock back into Gus Malzahn. Oh, okay. And UCF, uh, they just got their quarterback. I think KJ Jefferson is a good fit over there. That'll do just fine. I think he'll set the league on fire. I think that they uh, have been through the ringer now in the Big Twelve, and I also think that maybe it'll be a little bit more favorable for them next year in the truly wide open feeling conference. So I, I think the I'll go from three and six to maybe a positive winning record in the Big 12, which will possibly be the biggest jump. I just don't mm-hmm. think Baylor's going to do it. I don't think Cincinnati's going to make a big jump. Yeah, I'm very curious about TCU. I kind of think they're going to remain towards the bottom. So, yeah, I agree with a lot of what you said. Cincy, I think, will make a jump, but not a big one. I don't think they're going to be one and eight. I think they may win three or four games next year. BYU is the one I want to pick. Their quarterback is graduating, correct? Yes. Keaton Slovis is gone. And that's where I don't know if I can pick them, not mm-hmm. knowing what's their, their quarterback. I think they're the best structure as far as team and program to to still be able to move up. Um, but I don't know quarterback situation for them. Houston, I mean, a whole new coach. Mm-hmm. I think Donovan Smith is good, but I think he's got a ceiling. I believe he's got another year, right? I think he does. Yeah. I'm not picking TCU out of principle. <laughs> it's a tough one. It really is because I don't. I look at the bottom of this league and I don't think anybody's going to make a, a great jump. But if I had to pick one, I think I'm going to go exactly where Clint goes in, in three and six UCF. I don't think they're going to be that bad next year. Um, and they made a bowl game, but I, I think that's a team that could be flirting with the top five in the Big 12 next year. Flirting with. I think they're still a a talent-rich team. I think they got a ton of team speed and will continue to do so. So I'm going to go UCF. BYU is my second answer with a big question mark at quarterback. BYU is my answer. Okay. I just feel like um, that's a program that knows how to win. Uh, I feel like it's a program that the Big 12, I don't think it's going to give them this massive boost recruiting, but I think it's going to inject some life there. Yep. And... They lost some some close games this year. I think they could they were better than ultimately what their record showed. Um, also got a gift win against us because of our quarterback situation. But uh, yeah, I think BYU is the team again because I I feel like you can't pick an Iowa State or a West Virginia or whatever because then you feel like well they're already so far up there to begin with. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm not going Baylor. I don't feel like that program's in the right direction at all. But I do feel like BYU could could make a jump. Now, if we flipped it around and went the other way, who would drop team, it? Who you think will be a team that will drop off? I think there is potential for West Virginia to fall off. Now they've they've got Garrett Green and mm-hmm. quarterbacks pretty good. They do they will lose a little bit um, next season. What about Oklahoma State? Are we giving <sighs> Bowman a ninth year? I he's he's going to get the year. Yeah, I bet he does too. Because it was I think he only played in three games here. Uh, because that's what they're petitioning on is one of his years in Lubbock that he only played three games, and they don't really deny medical red shirts. Really, I mean that's that's pretty cut and dry on that. So, uh, I bet he comes back. They return their whole offensive line and return uh, Ollie Gordon too. So I, mm-hmm. as much as I want to see them falter a little, I don't think they're going to. Yeah, I don't. That think That still they wasn't. Be. That was not. I I know what the record says, but I also know what my eyes saw. That's not a ten win football team. Nope. How they got there, I don't know. Crazy. Mike Gundy, he's got magic c- coming out of his butt or something. I, I don't know how he he does what he does, but they sp- spill out 10-win season after 10-win or 9 or 10-win seasons every year, well, even I mean, when they don't have He deserves a lot of credit for it, but I think their schedule this year had something to do had with it. Had a ton it. to do with it. Yeah. Had a ton, and I, yeah. I hadn't even looked to see what it is. Um, I still don't know about Iowa State. Overall, the, like we boosted them a lot. They went six and three this year. They're only seven and six overall this year. Yeah, they definitely yeah. overachieved from what we, well, at least what I thought they were going to be. I think that's a team that falls back from six and yeah. three. They, I think they could be about four and five next year. What about Kansas State? No, 
No. <laughs> They're good. Every year. What about I, Kansas? Maybe. Please say yes. But, yes. Absolutely. No you know, question. They, they uh, return a Zero lot wins. on offense. I know. Their <laughs> offense do. is still going to be legit. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly think their 5-4 and four in league play was a little, a little disappointing for what they could have been. Well, they didn't have their quarterback for most of the season. Well, season. I, mean, I know, but was pretty good though. Bean was pretty, yeah, yep, pretty darn good. So, who's your falling team? Oh man, Colorado. I think it could... oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's West Virginia. I don't expect them to. Yeah, I mean, to be good again. Six and three, nine and four for the season. Yeah. I just, I would be surprised by that. I think Iowa State, I'd, I'd probably drop down to a losing record next year. I don't think they go six and three. And I get they they return quarterback and some others, but. Um. Yeah, I you know I I look at the incoming teams in the league too, and there's really only one that scares me, one that makes me nervous for next year, and that's Arizona. It's not even Utah. Really? Yeah, I think that Arizona team is legit, and they have got a, a freshman quarterback that might step into the league and be the best mm-hmm. quarterback in the league next year. Not the Colorado Dion's. Not so much. Not so much. This has been the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 100-7thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.